Yeah. That's Have you had a chance to play anything? Not really. We're um we're really into as as you might have noted by the number of iterations of it. We're really into Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Phase 2. So here's one. Here's number two. Same same game. There's a lot of killing. There's number involved. three. Uh, we've we've bought it numerous times. It's it's a shame they haven't released another like a maybe number three. They were threatening to. Ubisoft, the company that produced Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2, seems to have retracted Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Patriots. If any of you are listening and can help get this game out. What? Please. Maybe it's they actually they released like a trailer for it and everything. How long ago was that? It was supposed to come out over a year ago. It sounds like a very serious conversation. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but sorry. for some reason I can never remember what the circumstances were. I ended up flying in separately from everyone else. And I got into London like five or six hours before every anybody else that I knew was yeah. there. So I just got in a car at the airport and was taken there. And they had a lounge, like a VIP lounge, where they had consoles set up. And I was like, well, I have hours to kill. I might as well play several things. And everybody loves a uh, rock band. Yeah, uh, yeah. Pathetic <laughs> wretch of a game. Not even close to the I'm real. Like, I'm not the slightest bit interested in that. But I'll tell you what, hunting terrorists, Tom Clancy style, <laughs> like did something to my mind. And we begged them to give us an Xbox and Tom Clancy's Red Six Vegas too. But what's funny about the fact that I carry it around now is that if you go to any video game store these days, that game costs about three quid. <laughs> so I might as That's well just thought. buy it. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, it's so old that nobody wants it anymore. Right. We have a. We actually have some mm. questions. Some genuine. So oh, don't worry about those. <laughs> so I've got lots I can talk about. Hi. Amazing. Hello. How are you? Uh, <laughs> I scooped you. I'm very well. How are you? Yeah. I was anticipating that question, so I knew how to Oh, how to perfect. Um, we heard you having um, a Chinese lesson. I'm not. Are you not? I'm actually not. Uh, for the first time on this tour, I'm not going in on the gang delivery. <laughs> gang. Uh, as, you, as you probably imagine, having food delivered to a venue yeah. at 11 p.m. means that you're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel. But yeah, we eat really, really badly on tour. Uh, so today, and I'm, I'm ashamed to admit where I bought it from, but today I was, I just needed salad. I'm also a vegetarian, so that, yeah, that, that's that a, sort of angle okay. um, is extreme on my end. Uh, so I went to, I mean, no, no offense name, to Marks and Spencer, but Marks and Spencer at least has like a little tub of greens, yeah. and then I bought their super food thing, which is edamame, Quinoa. I'm saying that edamame. I've never known how to say that word in my life. Yeah, yeah. Edamame. Yeah, so I think it's like edamame, quinoa, lentils, and something else. So I'm helpful. just going to put them together. I need one. I literally have not <laughs> eaten anything but curries, which. I'm sure you don't have a problem okay. with No, that. we don't have any problem with it, but literally this would have been day four of in curry. Our, oh, no, sorry. If we had eaten curry last night in Birmingham, where you're supposed to get the Balti. Which I really wanted to do. That would have been day four, and I was just like, I can't, I can't do it. Once you open last one, then. Oh god, <laughs> this is this is actually getting humiliating. Okay, I promise we don't normally do chains, despite the fact that I just said I bought salad from Marks and Spencer. Last night we did uh, whack a mole. Despite the fact, I mean, I like whack a mole, but you don't want to get. I feel like just chains mean that you're getting crappy food. Maybe I'm being prejudicial yeah, yeah. against chains. Mm. To be fair, I do like white. It's good. Um, but there's there is something like that sort of bums you out about. Well, you could eat the spike of everywhere that you go, couldn't you? We did that. Theoretically, for a while. there was a period very very early on, uh, like when we were doing van tours, yeah. uh, where we probably ate Wagamama and Pizza Express six days a week. And then like a kebab to set. Oh, oh how, how, what toll does that have on a person's Almost body? Kills you. <laughs> well, the thing is, at Pizza Express, we would get 
the salad. The Nostrano salad sans chicken, which they no longer offer Pizza Express. <laughs> That's disgraceful. Yeah. What was, that, what was the actual question? Uh, oh, that was that question. The question yeah, was, I I are just you went. having Chinese? Oh, oh yeah. That was, oh, right, right. That was so, question, no, yeah. I am not having Chinese tonight. I'm glad we got to the volume of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I'm not. I'm having a Marks and Spencer prepackaged salad. Oh, I'm fundamentally happy that I decided to do that, yeah. but I know that when we're done playing, the last thing I'm gonna want is a goddamn bowl of greens with edamame. Well, I'm gonna I, want some fried rice. Yeah. I know that they've got uh, Percy pigs down there. I bought oh, yeah. those Percy pigs. Oh, they're yours. Veggie pigs. Well, they're not mine. Well, I I had heard from our tour manager when he found out that I they're was from vegetarian. Marks and Spencer's. There we go. Yeah, okay. I had heard that the Marks and Spencer's vegetarian Percy pigs are not only delicious but more delicious. Than the non vegetarian. That is quite a claim. I, I've never uh, tried one. I should go in there and get one. I mean, they're okay. Yeah, more than welcome to one. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> sure. um, I'm not up for that. So I bought them for him, uh, and to say he was ungracious is maybe to be unfair. <laughs> he was excited by their presence, but then immediately demanded that I take them away because he would eat them all immediately. Oh, that's not so, so he told bad. me to give him two and then keep the bag. <laughs> I was like, I didn't, don't want these. And I tried one and it was like, fine, but I mean, it's a candy. I don't want to gorge on candy. Well, so our first genuine... I keep on thinking you're rolling a cigarette, <laughs> but you're taking a really long time doing it. Uh, our first actual... Oh, give me this. No, you'll know, you'll know what's coming okay. then. It's what bad. did you see? I saw the fly. Yeah. Chris Cody, Keith <laughs> Karn. Yeah, he's forgotten. Use one of those? <laughs> no, no, now you'll see all this. Just yeah. pretend you haven't seen it. You obviously hosted the Fly Awards. We obviously did. And yeah. I was. And ended the Fly, apparently. <laughs> that well, was. My question. You're amazing. So <laughs> my question was. Is there any correlation between we are scientists hosting the awards and the population of actually <laughs> shutting down? I mean, there has to be. Yeah. There absolutely has to be. Coincidence? Uh, I my, think not. My joke is that our fee was too high, but I'm not going to lie, our fee was not too high. But I yeah. think we may have consumed too much of their alcohol. I think their tab may have just been exorbitant <laughs> after all the alcohol. Well, I'm quite disappointed because obviously we weren't there, but you supposedly wrote a lot of good material. Obviously it would have been hilarious. Yeah. We haven't heard any of it, seen any of it, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know where it's. I mean, gone. I can't tell whether I'm uh, grateful or disappointed <laughs> that it wasn't broadcast in any way. Uh, I was so we disappointed. Were, we were pretty psyched about it. Uh, I mean, that that is legitimately the reason we took yeah. the job. Yeah. So we we're like, that means we have to write. Well, we definitely underestimated the amount of yeah. comedy we would have to write. We essentially wrote about an hour and a half of stand-up, which is a brutal quantity of stand-up. Like, pretty much no comedians do an hour and a half of stand-up. Nice. Yeah. Louis C.K.'s specials are an hour long, yeah. maximum, and he's the greatest. We Are Scientists does an hour and a half. Now, fair enough, there are two of us, so that's 45 minutes apiece. Yeah, that's when you spread it out like that, then yeah. that's fair. But we, I thought there would be some kind of live feed or like some coverage after, I mean, I there guess, was nothing. I guess now that the fly has dissolved, I'm but, comfortable saying it was supposed to be on XFM, but XFM appears to have, uh, oh, have that, pulled that, out that before it. That explains yeah. it. They were like a partner of it, and we were told yeah. it was going to be live broadcast. Were you broadcast disappointed that you spent all that time preparing? <laughs> no, this? no, no. Our, our goal was not... I, in fact, we were often pretty uh, convicted yeah. that it would not translate to an on-air listening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, there was part of me that was slightly relieved. Uh, yeah, I think if it had been a, I think XFM was correct to yeah. not broadcast. I mean, award shows are really boring. There's a lot of downtime. There's yeah. huge lulls and pauses and people giving, frankly, pretty, uh, <laughs> like, per, like solipsistic, speeches that nobody yeah. cares about. Well, I saw some YouTube videos where you guys were kind of doing stuff at NME Awards. They're like my mm. favorite videos of We Are Scientists full stop. Oh, I mean, I, I, feel like the NME, I feel like the NME Awards things are like a good example of why something should not really be live, unless it's, you know, the Oscars or something, yeah. which have like a billion dollar budget. Uh, like the NME Awards, when they broadcast them, those are 
those come out a week later yeah. because a team of editors has to cut that down into something even marginally watchable. Yeah. Like most of those awards ceremonies are just downtime and people like sort of standing on the side of like fucking Jarvis Cocker being like, do I, should I go back and talk right now? <laughs> Just, don't, just everybody stay here and then the guys from Bulls like breaking <laughs> shit on a table and they edited it down into you know 45 minutes of eminently watchable stuff yeah. sorry now what's this about Muse oh yeah <laughs> you even That's remember the question. order that they're in uh, yeah I heard that um, <laughs> I heard that Muse offered you some advice is that true well I mean now I feel like perspective is important it wasn't that we had like a mentorship <laughs> yes. with Muse. Yes. We were talking to Dom and we were playing some songs and he was just like, you guys need to make a heavy rock record. It was that casually issued. It wasn't that he sat us down and was like, I've thought a lot about We Are Scientist's career and I'm putting my, I'm really putting myself on the line here <laughs> and I think you need to do this and I'm the producer. He literally was like, we were all doing this. And I was like, you guys are made a pretty heavy rock record. Yeah. And we were like, yeah, we totally do. And then that isn't what we made. Yeah. So it wasn't as if we actively disregarded it's quite pointed defined. advice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we weren't defying Dom. <laughs> we simply didn't end up making that record. Yeah. One of these days, I don't mind okay. making the dumb curated heavy rock record. I look forward to that. But that's yeah. not what this one was. Uh, that's not what was in our heart. The that's... next question was, do you have any advice for Muse? Make a heavy rock record, <laughs> please. I think they might take that as an insult. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I think they should make a, you know, easygoing, sensitive, very deeply personal record. With Andy Burroughs. And my advice to them is to stop challenging the government. They are, one of them's gonna get sniped at some point. <laughs> that, that's good advice. That is. Right, um, I think we'll, we'll try and switch it to something about the record now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just please. Because, yeah? Please. I think I heard what you, record? I heard you've got a new album now. You heard we yeah, had a new album. That's and I've, I've, I might have heard some it. poor preparation <laughs> for an interview. No, we, we, but we're just going to ask what your personal highlight of the new album is. If you've got one particular mm -hmm. one or ten, um, ten or so. Yeah, I've, I'm, well, Chris has Chris has uh, purported that I'm incredibly fickle mm -hmm. because I definitely do change my mind about it all the time. I feel like right now I'm, I'm liking Return the Favor the most. Yeah. I was really into Make It Easy. And I'm still into it. Yeah. I haven't discarded it. It's, yeah. it's total garbage. It's like garbage. What, what do you it think tomorrow's bit. highlights? Yes. Uh, I don't know. I I had sort of been slightly resistant to the charms of Don't Blow It, which was one of my favorites when we wrote it. Um, but we've been rehearsing it. It's not in the set yet. But I'm, I'm really coming around. I think Don't Blow It is going to be the next one. Yeah. yeah. What delayed? album because we interviewed you, uh, interviewed you back in, um, I think it was like July 2012 and you said that the album was coming out 2013, it was, you know, coming out quite soon and then it's just, it disappeared. Yeah, a lot of things actively delayed, yeah. the, like just administratively delayed it. Yeah. Uh, we are... Well, our initial intention was that we didn't want to make it with the same producer who had made our last three records, right. simply because we wanted to make a record with someone else, yeah. out of, like it, by principle. Yeah. Uh, and then he found out about that, and he got very adamant that he should produce it again because he's got like a invested through line. Yeah. Um, we were like, oh well, okay, that kind of changes our mind about things. So let's talk about how that will work out. So that eight a few months. Oh, he's also like now become one of the biggest producers in music. Awesomely for him, but complicating our, yeah. his schedule. So he couldn't just say, I want to do it. And then we'd be like, cool, see you in the studio tomorrow. Yeah. So we started those negotiations. And then at some point his manager was like, listen, dudes, he can't, he can't, don't listen. He, literally his manager told us, don't listen to him. He can't do it. And we were like, well, come on. And then, well, maybe I'm saying too much. So anyway, <laughs> turns out he couldn't do it. He is very busy yeah. in a fucking amazing way. I mean, yeah. he made 
a bunch of the best records of this year. I mean, he made Vampire Weekend's record, oh, wow. which I, I think is the best record is, uh, of this year. Uh, and Sarah, he did like the Heim record. Um, so he, we all wanted to make it work, and then he, because he's legitimately so in demand, and we can't pay him what any of those people pay him. Yeah. Um, so his manager Riley was like, "Look, I know, I know, in like a fucking grand world, bros would just make records, yeah. but I'm not letting my <laughs> fucking artist make this record." Essentially. Uh, so then we're like, "Well, okay." We weren't that hurt because that our plan was not to make it with him. Before he very Before, charmingly yeah. convinced us again. I mean, he is fucking amazing, and we would have loved him. But uh, so then we were like, okay, well, now several months later, we're back to like fucking zero. But uh, our friend Chris Cody, who had engineered our last two records, and uh, you know makes amazing records yeah. on his own, uh, we had been talking to him about being involved in making the record with Ariel, if Ariel had been making it. And so when the Ariel thing clearly wasn't going to happen, we were like, well, let's still fucking make it with Chris Cody, please. Yeah. And Cody was way into it. And it, and I, I think we did need to make a record with someone else and someone like Chris, who uh, has like, he's, he's uh, he has a very like uh, like curational sense without feeling like he's elbowing into things yeah. which was which was kind of different for us uh, like his taste is impeccable but he he never really enforces it upon you but then he likes he really does stuff and you're like, you're like, that. Oh, that is better that actually is better. yeah oh, that's cool um, so that took a while. Then we, oh god, I'm taking forever. To <laughs> Is he gonna come back? So then we, we also had let go of our management. Yeah. Which is also a very long story involving our having left EMI. I mean, I actually don't really know what EMI's state of affairs are right now, but they they seemed dire. Yeah. Uh, and so we kind of were just like, well, it seems like a move people are making is to kind of put out records themselves via distributors. So we tried that out and it was crazy. I mean, it was a weird move, but we knew he didn't want to be on EMI. The manager we had hired when we signed to EMI wasn't really a manager who was interested in independent releases. So then when we left EMI, we're like, we would like a manager yeah. who has experience in doing that. Uh, so then we had to look for so that took a while. Yeah. And then once we'd hired that manager, he had to find out who was going to distribute this record. So that, we finished the record in 2013. Yeah. Uh, wait, 20... Wait, we finished in... Oh, God. We finished in 2012. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. You, last time we spoke, you said you just had to do the vocals, and that's it. Yeah. We finished it in 2012. Yeah. Okay. Which is why we put out the EP in 2013, in yeah. June or July or whenever it was, which we made in two days. Two days? Right. <laughs> just so that we remembered your existence, basically. Yeah. No, just to give ourselves something to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're getting bored. Yeah. You well, not that we were getting bored, but we were just like, yeah. well, we're going to be sitting on this for a while, as we'll write new songs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What activities would you recommend doing whilst listening uh, to the new album? You should probably play Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six <laughs> Games, <Yeah>. too. <laughs> Come on, Is that's it? a rookie question. Oh, I'm sorry. Tom Clancy's Rumor <laughs> Six Face. Too obvious. <laughs> Your new drummer, Pete yeah. Kong. Nice guy, we saw him downstairs. They were, they were talking about shoes. Supposedly he's very into his He made me shoes. feel like I didn't know enough about my own shoes. Yeah, he came out, are they 970s or something? I had no idea what they were. You know, he is weirdly obsessed with new balances. Like he, I, I've, I've heard him engage other people about their new balances. So you're not the first in one? In the past. No, oh yeah, don't. I, I felt like a dis I saw a disappointment in his eyes when I couldn't tell him what <laughs> number they were. I've never met a man so invested in new balance. But I, I've never had a conversation with him because, no offense, I don't touch the thing. 
<laughs> Any particular reason? No, no, no. I'm not. A, 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 yeah, apart yeah. from like Converse or huge puffy, like old school high tops. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I, I'm not. I, I feel like I can't pull off sneakers. Perhaps Keith is just sponsored by New Balance, and no one knows about it. That does sound like <laughs> something that sneaky bastard would try. To how pull. did he? How did you guys end up finding him to replace Andy? Um, so we had a keyboardist touring with us after we put out our second album, Brain Thrust Mastery. Yeah. A guy named Max Hart. Um, and Max Hart now plays with Katy Perry, but is also producing albums. And he produced, I think, like sort of a country style album that Keith Carm played on. And when we realized that Andy couldn't do that much touring because he's got, you know, his yeah. own to make. Uh, I, went, I was having lunch with Max. And I said, like, yeah, so we gotta find a drummer for this tour. And he's like, I, don't worry, I got it. You don't need to find one, I, I think I got it. But he literally said, there's one problem. His name is also Keith. <laughs> and that actually was a little bit of a problem. We still haven't really quite worked it out yet. Yeah, two thirds of the band are called Keith. I feel like having two Keiths and a Chris is ridiculous. Sounds like a sitcom. Maybe you could make that your next. Uh... We're not making that anything. <laughs> is that is that a margarita? Well? No, this is, is this a... lemon. Is this Marks and Spencer's powdered lemon or something? Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, Hard lemon. Margarita. Yeah. Our tour manager bought us a juicer. I saw a lot of squeezed limes. A whole lot of squeeze on. That's me. That's, me. That's how you know I've been there. The trail of That's how the FBI know and I've been around. <laughs> I've squeezed lines At the murder scene. Yeah. The dumb luck video. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, she. I showed it to her today and she. How far did you get? Well, I, I, was made I made her the watch it. So. Uh, perfect. She said, this is disgusting. It's not <laughs> disgusting. It's a, uh, She's like, I'm not sure how I feel about it. No, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Still not. Even not now, sure. even now, I'm these not, hours not, later? Yeah, I'm not, sure I'm, I'm not sure if I'll watch it again. Oh. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit gruesome for me. Well, gruesome my, for girls. Well, I wanted to know. <laughs> just, gruesome for girls yeah. would be a good album title for the rest of the What I wanted to know was, what did you actually use when stuff's coming out of Chris's stomach? What is that? Those were actual organs of some sort. His organs. Presumably not human. No. Okay. No. They weren't his. No. Um, Thank God. Yeah, I assume there's some sort of beef organs. I don't know. That's uh, pretty bummed. Uh, That's uh, pretty bummed <laughs> in general throughout. I had to handle a cow tongue. <laughs> made me really upset. It was when you fell on the pavement. Yeah. And I was like, what? Yeah. That <laughs> made, me, made me really sad. And being a vegetarian, yeah, well, does that not... No, it does. It does. Were you made was, to do, who made you do that? Because it can't have been your own I idea. I guess they didn't make me, but... At some point, I just had to decide whether or not I was going to choose the battle for a tongue that had already been taken out of an animal. It's like, let's let these guys do what they want to do. But I had to touch it way too often for my personal taste. No pun intended. Uh, I also want to know, in, this, in the part where you're like, vomiting, what is that? Oh. Oh, it looks that, like some kind of soup. That was uh, a concoction of my own devising. Uh, the only things they had for us to eat at, during that shot, which was the first shot of the second day of the shoot, uh, was really awful coffee and super underripe bananas. And I was oh like, well I, well, I don't want to eat either of these, but you know what happens when you mash them up in your mouth? It's like barf. I want a bar. Film me bar. <laughs> so that was that was the use that those bananas and coffee got. And it wasn't even mashed part. up before. We really mashed up before. Mashed up. Do you feel like you are going to have like the job of the NME Awards <laughs> editorial <laughs> staff? Yeah. I'll, I'll leave it down to Mark. Uh, I'll, I'll just know. leave in all the bits about Rainbow Six and just cut Ooh. the rest out. I, I think that's all we need. I do feel like that's what's most important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so basically we just say thanks. Would you like to say yes. thanks to the camera? No. We don't need to say thank you to the no, camera. No, I don't thank you. You thank me, <laughs> camera. Not viewers. Thank you, viewers. But this, uh, this Sony Handycam HD, thank me.